Oliver Callan, thanks so much for coming in. Oh, yes. Tell us a bit about uh, Callan's Kicks is coming back mm -hmm. on October 4th. Or to you really it's Series 14. It's only taken seven years to seven get here. Who do you enjoy doing most? Well, I mean, the Taoiseach is obviously always going to be the character you have to, to nail, basically. So from the days of doing Knob Nation on the Jerry Ryan show, uh, Bertie was there, then you had Brian Cowan, and we've had Enda Talia, we've had quite a you know, list of characters, and it's like a new cast of sitcom characters comes into you every time. But it was great doing Enda because it was all high energy, you know, it's like, up the road and mind the dresser, I know your people, Egan, I know your stock. And it's all very good and you could walk into a room and you could punch people in the shoulder and get away with it. And then it becomes the Leo era and it's like, although he's the youngest, kind of fittest uh, Taoiseach, he's also the least energetic. So it all becomes kind of, hi, it's great to be here. I'm just too cool to be animated, I suppose. But um, it's great. I don't really do small talk, so if you want to uh, ask serious questions. <laughs> the British Prime Minister Boris Johnson came over. Yeah. Did you feel that was a good moment for you? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty good for my self-satisfaction rating to stand next to Bojo because standing next to a, a Prime Minister who's basically a shaved Yeti uh, peeking out of a, a pile of crumpled suits left in a charity shop makes me look like an absolute ledge bag and a very zeitgeisty type teach. So I think it's, you know, it's, it's totally good for, when, for my when, record. When Boris did this, did you feel like you were almost in the gym with, with Matt? Well, 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 no, first of all, uh, the gym is uh, where I work out in front of uh, the person I love the most, which is obviously a mirror, uh, or any kind of reflective surface pretty good. And I mean, I think I came across pretty uh, amazeballs uh, in front of Mr. Johnson and uh, everything is going to be very, very successful. I mean, I either stand beside Boris Johnson, and if he's not available, I stand next to Simon Harris because he looks like a man who's been printed out when the colour cartridge is running low. So. <laughs> Let me talk to, to uh, Enda again. Yes, I love Enda. talking as Enda. What have you been I'm happy to? already, you see? Are you happier? My endorphins are, you are flying. That you're no longer Taoiseach? Well, obviously, uh, after becoming the longest serving Taoiseach in the history of Fine Gael, it's a very sad moment for me. This is a sad end now, a very different thing. But, you know, uh, I'm now the former Taoiseach. Uh, I'm still sitting in there in Dáil Éireann, pulling in the old pension, pulling in the old salary. Never mind the pension, the lump sum comes later, feeling as happy as Larry. But obviously, with l less power. Back in the day when I had the sort of power that I could just go to Micheál Martin to find out what my instructions were for the day, that was real power. Before that, I had to get someone to translate the German instructions from the fax machine. Do you miss it? <sighs> Sorry, there's something in my eye, which is pure bitterness and begrudgery. But no, I love, I love being the former teacher. <laughs> Sorry. If you want to keep nice and happy, you can also go on to Pascal who has to do terrible things to people, like make them pay tax when all the others, you know, Apples and Googles, aren't paying any tax at all, or minimal micro-taxes, we like to call them. But of course, this being Budget Week, Bowie, we have to be very prudent about where we spend our money, and this is going to be an itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny, yellow polka dot bikini of a budget. See, it sounds nicer when you put it in a cutesy way. Uh, and I'm very excited uh, about giving no money away at the budget and holding all the spending promises until the election time, where we just throw billions, confetti at people, like the Dublin Metro, which is only going to cost five to seven billion, you know, between friends. But it's very important that we have a metro in a capital city, especially one that goes underground, so that people travelling from the airport never, ever have to see Santry again. Thank you very much.